everybody, lazy ladies and gentlemen, you're currently listening to the Maybe Generation Gap. Gap. Yeah, this is the only light-hearted podcast starring two giggly girls gathering people from different generations to discuss some not so light-hearted topics. Ooh. Today's hello was in low. Mm-hmm. Woo! <laughs> oh my god, guys, it feels so good recording after so long. It's like our first episode, right? Like after, after school schools started. reopened. Oh my god, yes. And to start off the recording season, we have such a spectacular topic we've got. Mm-hmm. So today's topic is called Spooky, Spooky Sensations. Sensations. So this is an episode addressing all the paranormal experiences. That's scary. <laughs> so scary. Yeah. Okay, Nivi, do you want to introduce our guest for today? Yes, so joining us today, we have the co-founder of the Detroit Paranormal Expedition, also a talented PR officer. Please welcome Mr. Jeff Atkins. Woohoo! <laughs> Hi there, thanks for having me. Thank you so much for coming. Of course, <laughs> okay, so <my> guys. <laughs> okay, so guys, let's kick start with just setting the horror mood. That's the whole theme of today's episode. So since we have someone so very professional on the panel today, unlike us, <laughs> um, since you've had like hands-on experience with these things, um, we wanted to ask you, so would you like to share some of your most memorable paranormal experiences that you have encountered? Yeah, of course. I mean, I've been doing this stuff for about 10 years now. Um, so I've had a lot of, ex- I've had a lot of experiences. Uh, there's you know, numerous places throughout the U.S. and throughout the world where people have had these experiences. I haven't had the opportunity to go overseas yet, but um, here in the U.S., I mean, I've uh, everything from, you know, I've seen with my eyes what I would consider to be a ghost three times, and it's it's never been with a face and clothing, but it's always been like a black, shadowy silhouette that I could see through. One of them was in my house. It was walking down my hallway. Um, one of them was at Ohio State Reformatory, so if you've ever seen the movie Shawshank Redemption, that's where that was filmed. Um, Five of us saw that one at the same time. It walked out of a shower room, turned the corner, walked down the hallway, and then turned again and walked into a jail cell. And I couldn't see it. I I couldn't see uh, like a head, but I could see shoulders, a chest, and then just below the legs. And you could see it walking and then turn and keep walking. And then um, it's been, yeah, I mean, anything from that to... I've heard voices coming out of rooms when no one's in the room. Um, one of them was at an old psychiatric hospital, and I was walking down the hallway, and they uh, used to had this small room where it had a bathtub, and that was where they did hydrotherapy, which is one of the things that they did at psych hospitals. And um, I heard this woman's voice from the back of the room, and it was no audible, it was no distinguishable words. It was just almost like babbling. It was gibberish. And I, oh. and I walked back in there. I said, hello, and then I, w- I turned the corner, there was just no one there. So, I mean, anything from, you know, that to photos and videos, it's been, a lot's happened in the last 10 years. That's so scary. Oh my God, guys, disclaimer, Nevi refuses to watch horror films at night, so this is going to be big for you. <laughs> but, whoa. Nevi, have you had any paranormal experiences? Uh, nothing has happened to me, but, like, a small thing happened to me, like, when I was, I think, in third grade. I went to like the, I went to like my room to like do something with my hair and then I looked into the mirror and I saw something like black behind me but I don't know if it's true because my mom's just like it might be your imagination. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, could, yeah. could be but I mean hey I mean the, the ones that I've seen look just like that it was black and shadowy so um, who knows maybe it was real. Oh, oh my god nothing's happened to me though like i told nevi before starting this episode that i'm gonna be so lost because i am i don't do a lot of i don't even see a lot of horror movies mm-hmm. but i've heard of a lot of stories though especially from my friends including you mm-hmm. one of the stories that one of my friends told me that she said that happened to her family member was that like they moved to a new house it was like a bungalow and they constantly were receiving this is not technically paranormal experiences but it's something like spooky that happened to them that um, they were constantly receiving letters from someone who apparently lived in the house before they moved in there and he was like writing every single detail about what they're wearing and 
you know he knew everything that's happening in their house and it, it, and so, uh, later it even turned to phone calls so then that person started calling them and then you know he it was a very disturbing voice mm-hmm. and he used to uh, tell them about like you know how he knows exactly what they're doing where they are and he, they, he even heard like some really private conversations of that family so every moment he had a eye on them and when they um, when they reported it to the police um they tried to trace the phone and the phone traced back to the owner of the house mm-hmm. like the people living there basically so it's creepy yeah it's not creepy. creepy very creepy but it's so Ugh. scary yeah. okay but um since you have had like actual actual experiences with this how was your like first time when you when you first experienced all of this yeah the first experience i had was when i was 9 Um, oh. my mom works. Yeah. My mom works midnight. So I'd be at home alone with my sister while she was at work. And then my mom had a water bed. So I'd always sleep in her room. And, uh, one night I'm going off to sleep and I could see in the hallway that the light in my room turned on down the hallway. So I went down there to yell at my sister who I figured was in my room, you know, mm-hmm. and then I opened the door and, uh, nobody was in the room. So I don't know how that light turned on, you know? So that was my first experience. And then we had a lot of other experiences in that house i mean um we had a cat for instance and it was meowing outside my sister's door one night and she said something like you're not coming in tonight and she said that she actually watched the door handle turn and then the door cracked and then the cat walked in and uh yeah i mean ever since then you know i'm i'm 30 now so it's been that's been 21 years um i've always just been fascinated by it how do you deal with it at such a young age like i would I mean it was scary. Home. Yeah, I mean being being so young it was definitely scary. Um but uh I was more curious than anything I, I think about what I was experiencing. So ever since then I've always just kind of, you know, pursued it and it's like the more experiences I have that I can't explain the more questions I have. That's so cool. Yeah. I'm really fascinated by your job, although I although I would never be able to do it because <laughs> I'm scared. I'm scared. <laughs> yeah, I mean it does get it does get freaky. I've got a niece. My niece is um let's see, she just turned 16 and she's been asking me for years, you know, to to go out on one of these um sort of things that Todd and I do in these investigations. And uh, you know, she started asking me when she was like 13. I said, "Okay, I'll take you when you're 16." So when she turned 16, <laughs> I booked this um this old jail in Indiana, dates back to like 1878. Um really really creepy place and uh, you know, she's all excited and got in there. And she got pretty freaked out in the first like half an hour and then basically <laughs> went and hung out in the lobby with my sister. And she got, you know, it's just if you don't do this stuff all the time, it can be really scary. I mean, I like I said Todd and I, you know, Todd's the co-founder of DPX with mm-hmm. me. Um, we just have seen and heard and felt so much. It's like most of the time now it's not scary per se, but um oh, so you've got used to it. Pretty much. Yeah. Wow. I mean, you know, I've <laughs> That's even impressive. at home, even at home, I mean, one day I was sitting in my, you know, we had just gone somewhere and I, you know, we have taken stuff home with us and um Just get we just gone somewhere and I'd gotten home and um I was sitting in my bedroom and I've got in in the kitchen I had like a like a bowl in the sink and there was like a fork in the bowl or something like that mm-hmm. and I could hear that fork start to move around that bowl like it was like it, it made like a like a like a very distinctive noise and I um you know I got up and I went in there and you know for a lot of people that would be scary but for me I've just seen and felt so much that it's like I I go I go in there and try to talk to it, you know. Oh, I'm speechless. Whoa. Please, this is so shocking. Whoa, you're very courageous. <laughs> yeah. It's just uh, you know, doing it for so long. It's I mean, I, the spirit world I think is very real. I mean, I could never not believe in it now. Um, but I think I think even as much as we know about it is like sort of a fluke i think that we're not supposed to know about it until we're on that side um so you know i don't know if we're ever going to definitively prove it i i don't think we're supposed to mhm 
yeah speaking of which i just remembered one video that i'd seen like it was these three youtubers they went to a haunted school in india and um there were a lot of you know rumors about that school and how um it was abandoned and stuff and so they tried to go and explore that uh, school and they literally got it on film there was like a very very uh it wasn't a very distinct uh, figure but like you described it like a black shadowy figure that was mm-hmm. reflecting on the windows and it, it, they saw it for a millisecond but it was there and they played it on slow mo and i saw it too that's so scary oh and it, that's so creepy it's i'm getting so scared <laughs> maybe it has chills i can see it <laughs> <laughs> Okay guys so after that that segment <laughs> yeah. okay we're ready to actually just go mm. <laughs> but okay we're not done yet now we're going to answer some spooky questions that we found online that we thought would be very interesting to hear from you so mm-hmm. what is your take on these things sure. so um so let's do it <laughs> are you ready let's do it <laughs> okay <laughs> okay nevi do you want to go for the first question yeah so the first question is what is the scariest horror game you've ever played the horror scariest games. horror game mm-hmm. yeah um let's see what are we talking about horror game wise are we talking about like a video like, game no, no like the ouija board um, oh, like those kind of games. Uh, well, I've never, I've never used a Ouija board, um, but let me think about this. Um, I mean, I could definitely talk about like, the experiences that we've had. I wouldn't say that I've done a lot of like games. Um, mm-hmm. I, do, I am familiar with Ouija boards. I mean, mm-hmm. one of the scariest things I think I've ever experienced was um, when a, a vinyl record, which, you know, the music vinyl records when we were at mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. an old psych hospital, um, literally flew off of the, a shelf and then landed on the floor so hard it broke and a piece of it shot down the hallway. I mean, it was like something was definitely angry uh, with us. But uh, but yeah, I mean, as far as like games, I'm not familiar with other, really any other ones besides the Ouija ones. I've never done the Ouija one. Mm-hmm. Maybe have you? You have, I know. Okay, let's see. <laughs> no, like uh, when we were like small, there was like this game we used to play called Charlie Charlie. Have mm-hmm. you heard of it? I don't know. I haven't heard um, of that, but it's probably yeah, similar they... to stuff that I we got things over here like there's some urban legend called like Bloody Mary or something, and yeah, if you yeah, stand yeah. in no, front this of is the not... mirror. This is not exactly the same thing. Okay, can you explain? It's basically like a paper and you write, I don't remember exactly, so Mm -hmm. you write, you draw like a line Uh, mm -hmm. and like a line here and then you... A vertical line and horizontal. You basically draw a cross. Yeah, and then you write like some words or something and you keep like two pencils, um, like the cross Mm -hmm. and then... uh, you say something you Charlie, say Charlie Charlie are you there or something like that yeah, right? yeah and then if it spins it means that it's there and if it doesn't spin then he's not there but it was a very viral thing i remember like yeah like in school it was like a big thing that like the heads came uh, came to our class yeah. and told us like don't do this don't you're do this you're not thing. allowed to do it because everyone was doing it and people were getting so scared yes. and there was it was so viral on youtube as well like everyone was doing it and they yeah. were like you know okay we shut all the windows so it's not the wind and yeah. da, 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 and it's it's whoa. so you it's did funny. that yeah. yeah it's funny how stuff like that kind of starts and you know gets so big on youtube and tiktok and all that it's like people start to do mm-hmm. they they say there's something going on and maybe there is or maybe there isn't but it just becomes this whole big thing this whole viral mm-hmm. culture that we're in yeah that's how a lot of teenagers get into doing all of this like i don't think we would do anything similar to what you do obviously but yeah mhm so when you did it what was it what was the result like i used to go for like chess classes in school okay so when we used to do that like in chess nothing used to happen but then three of my friends uh we went to like a house and we did it over there and this girl like she i think she blew it <laughs> not very what? sure but okay. yeah it, it was never true oh well. yeah. i've never played any horror games so okay okay <laughs> the next question um are you convinced that ghosts exist oh yeah absolutely <laughs> i mean I, I like i said before i've seen and heard and felt too much now i've seen them with my own eyes i've 
got audio, I've got video, I've got photo evidence of them. <clears throat> um, some of the stuff that I've come across is like, I couldn't explain that anyway with anything rational that I've ever, you know, experienced in my 30 years of life. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, um, I think the spirit world is real. Some of the spirits I've come across have been intelligent and responded to what I've said. Um, sometimes it seems to not have a consciousness, you know what I mean? It's kind of like it's mm. it's just going to do what it's going to do, and I, I can't make it do something. Um, so I think there's different types of it, but I think it's all I think it's all energy. I mean, you know, energy is not created or destroyed. It just exists, and it basically transitions. So then if someone dies, then you would think that their energy would go back out into the environment. That would make sense. Or if someone's going through something really traumatic, something bad is happening to them, you think about a place like a hospital or a jail, um, you know, there's a lot of emotional energy there that I think can get stuck in the place. I think it can get like embedded in the walls. So I think that's why after a place has been around a long time, you know, sometimes, and I would say most of the time, some energy sticks around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's creepy. What are, you, what are your thoughts, Nivi? Yeah, I think they exist. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't have proof. Uh -huh. that, like, oh my god, they exist. But Yeah. Yeah, like you said, like since you've been doing this for so long and you actually have had, like, you've seen it with your own eyes, you've heard it, you probably, that's why you can be so sure of it. I feel like I, I'm not, I'm not saying they don't exist, but I'm not saying they exist either because, yeah. you know, I feel like that's, that's okay in my part since I haven't had any experiences as such. Mm -hmm. Not that I want to, mm -hmm. <laughs> but you know, okay. And some and some yeah. people some people go through their entire lives and never experience anything, you know. And mm -hmm. the reasoning what, behind that is who knows. I mean, I sort of theorize. So you know, there, there's like psychic mediums, right? There's people that are purported to be able. They're so sensitive to the spirit world that they can communicate, they can see, they can see these entities, they can take messages from them. I don't have that ability, but I've been doing this stuff for so long. I feel like my, I, like my intuition and stuff like that has gotten stronger. I, so I sort of wonder, I mean, in doing this for 10 years, I've never seen a ghost with a face and clothes and stuff like that. And so I wonder, am I just not sensitive enough to see the spirit in that form? And some people might not be sensitive enough to see or interact with the spirit world at all. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I think I think it's a spectrum. You might have some people where they just are not sensitive enough to interact with it. And you might have people like me that are kind of in the middle and can get some interaction. And you got people on the far side that can see and hear and actually communicate with these mm -hmm. with these spirits. I think it's a spectrum. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So it must have become like a part of your daily life now. <laughs> Pretty much is. <laughs> I mean, especially this time of year. You know, uh, doing lots of spooky stuff, but I mean, I, you know, it's been uh, part of my daily life now for a long time. Mm-hmm. That's scary. <laughs> Nibby's reaction to everything is that scary. <laughs> okay, Nibby, go for the next question. Yeah, the next question is, do you look forward to Friday the 13th or dread it? What was that last part? Do I look forward to what? Friday the 13th or you dread it? Oh, I look forward to it. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of expected now. <laughs> do we've you done, do you like do something special on Friday the thirteenth? We've done events, um, so you know we we will go to a place and investigate it, and uh, you know sometimes it's just Todd and me. Sometimes we bring a couple people. Sometimes we'll do events where the public can come with us. Um, we've done events on Friday the thirteenth. Um, you know. Obviously, it's kind of a spooky day, and people want to get out mm -hmm. and do that kind of stuff. Uh, I, you know, I don't know that we've experienced more on that day. You know, it, I, I'm not sure there's much more to it than sort of the urban yeah. legend and the lore of it. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I mean, we definitely look forward to and, and do stuff on Friday the 13th. Mm hmm. We, I remember we were planning to record this, like a spooky episode um, on Friday the 13th. And Nivi was like, no, 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 no. Yeah, I was Please, no. scared. <laughs> so Nivi dreads it. Yeah. I'm just meh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And the final question is, have you ever tried to create a voodoo doll? A voodoo doll? You know, I have mm -hmm. never tried to create them. I mean, I've seen them. Um mm -hmm. 
you know, I tend to think there could be something to it, you know, and I, I don't know that necessarily, you know, you got a voodoo doll, you stick a pin in its eye and someone, the eye gets messed up. I mean, maybe there's something to it, maybe there's not, but I think there's a lot of power and intention. I think the brain's a lot more powerful than we even understand yet. So I think, you know, when a person, you know, if they're, if they're putting ill intent out, you know, through their mind and their thoughts mm -hmm. and, you know, I, I think that it could possibly have some kind of an effect on the other person. Um, because I think, again, everything comes back down to energy. I mean, you sort of get what you put out into the world. Um, and I just everything I feel like comes back to energy. Mm -hmm. I know neither of us have tried to create voodoo dolls. Yeah. But I've seen, I saw this one video in which they tried to create a voodoo doll. And I've seen, a, I don't know why I've seen all of these videos, but uh, yeah, in that they tried to create a booty doll and they failed, so. <laughs> okay. <That's> so weird. <laughs> okay, but, um, okay, wait, actually we have one more question. Mm -hmm. Okay, come on. Yeah, the last question is, what do you think hell looks like? What do I think hell looks like? Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, you know, I think that you would have to believe that there is a hell, you know, and I, I, I honestly don't. Um, I think that there are negative entities. I think that there is evil in the world. Um, I think, but I'll tell you in doing this for so long, most of what we've come across is not evil. Most of it does not mean harm to people. Some certainly do. Um, I have sort of a very hybrid belief in the afterlife. I mean, I think it most, it's mostly aligns with Christianity, but um, you know, I think that, I'm trying to keep it sort of short, I mean, I think, I sort of believe in reincarnation, you know, I think that the energy that makes up you and you and me, you know, I don't necessarily think that everybody has a singular soul. I think that, you know, we are basically vessels of energy and that you have these experiences and you have to learn from them and kind of become a higher version of yourself. You have to, you know, be you're basically going through struggles and encountering certain people and certain things to raise your energy. I think the whole goal of, of life is that people's energy, we are all sort of, we should be working together to raise the energy. And I think that when we, when we die, you know, we, that energy might have to go through another life. You might come back and have to do this again because you didn't take away from the last time what you needed to take away. Um, but I don't think that anybody, I don't think that anybody is, is sent to a lake of fire, you know, in the center of the earth and tormented forever because they didn't read the Bible enough or something like that. And so mm -hmm. I, I think, I think the more, um, I think the more realistic version of hell is a much less, um, I don't know how to really put it, uh, theatrical type thing. I mean, it's, you know, I think the, the real hell that people encounter is really more within themselves. I think sometimes when people pass on, um, they feel guilt. Maybe they took their own mm -hmm. life. Maybe they took mm -hmm. someone else's life, you know, in their lifetime. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, if, if any sort of form of hell exists, I think it's more along those lines that they are wrestling with their self and learning to forgive their self, um, more so than, you know, some spiritual devil with a pitchfork that's, um, mm -hmm. you know, torturing them. That's, yeah. That makes a lot of sense now. Mm -hmm. And I feel like in this episode, I'm really like experiencing the generation gap because for us, the first thing when we were discussing this question is, oh, a fiery place. A fiery place. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's, that's what a lot of people, you know, uh, think of it as. And that's not mm -hmm. surprising. I mean, that's how that's how the media and movies and TV and everything has, it, always, yeah. has always portrayed it. But I mean, just doing this stuff, you know, and some of it too is just like, you know, I talk about intuition and sort of, and that's that gut feeling. So you meet somebody and you get a gut feeling. You walk in somewhere, you get a gut feeling. The feeling that you have there, that's your intuition. So mm -hmm. the more you trust it, the more you listen to it, the stronger that that gets. So my beliefs are based on, you know, how I was raised. I was raised in a Christian family, so that was kind of like the basis of my beliefs. And I still pretty much believe in that. But, you know, I've had these experiences, and so I, I sort of reconciled okay, well, what did I learn as a kid? What have I experienced? What's the middle ground here? What feels right to me in my heart? And so everything that I believe is because that's what feels right to me. Mm -hmm. 
my perspective on things is changing guys <laughs> Okay guys to conclude today's episode we asked our insta followers to send us some spooky never have i ever questions yep so let's answer some of them let's see what we've got okay navi go ahead read the first one so the first one is never have i ever looked into the mirror and said bloody mary yeah that's what you were mentioning right have you done it yeah you know, I actually have I actually haven't done that. Oh, okay. And I was just I was just randomly thinking about that like like 2 days ago because I remember the first time that I ever heard about that. I was in second grade, so I was probably oh, I don't even know how old would I be. I guess I'd be like 7 or 8 years old. Mm-hmm. And um I was like so scared about it back then. And like, mm-hmm. you know, Again, I mean, this, this is a generational thing. It, back then, and we're talking about like 1999, so there wasn't social media or anything like that. But the kids at school were going in the bathroom and doing it, and oh saying this, saying they saw her and all that stuff. And I was like, I'm not doing that. <laughs> I never, <laughs> and I and I never did. And I thought about it the other day, and I almost did it just <laughs> just to do it, but oh. I, but but I didn't though. <laughs> oh, are you scared to do it? <laughs> Uh, you know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's so scary. Like Nivi's the one who explained it to me what it was, and I was like, "Whoa, Whoa. Nivi, have you considered doing it?" No, no, <laughs> I don't want to die. No, <laughs> whoa, okay. Do you want to do it? No, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Let's go to the next one. Never have I ever used the Ouija board. Okay, so we actually kind of already spoke about this. So mm-hmm. no one ever has done it. Okay, so we well, got my out. aunt has done it. <laughs> oh, I don't know if she like took her hand out or if she kept her hand, but yeah, she did it. What happened then? I don't know. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. Um, the next one. Whoa, the next one is kind of silly, but okay. Never have I ever read a Stephen King novel at night. I don't read books. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a yeah. I'm not a big novel guy. I mean, uh, Stephen King's an amazing writer for mm-hmm. sure, but mm-hmm. I've never uh, even read a Stephen King novel in the daytime or the nighttime. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I haven't either. I have read. I've not read a full novel of Stephen King because I don't know. I just started it, but I never finished. But not at night. <laughs> Which one did he start? I'll show you. <laughs> okay, guys. But I think with this, we can end this episode. Yeah. I learned a lot. Yeah. And my the perspective is changing now. Thanks to you, so. <laughs> and all of this is just enough to keep us awake at night for like this week. Yeah. <laughs> we'll return for our next session later. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, but thank you so much for coming. It was so great talking to you. Thank you for coming. Thanks for having me. A lot had a lot of fun. Uh, hopefully, you get some sleep still. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So you guys know the drill. If you guys like this episode, what should they do, Navi? If they like this episode, <laughs> if you like this episode, please make sure to follow us here on Spotify and check out our Instagram page at the official Chenka for weekly interaction to be part of our third question segment. <laughs> Navi has this memorized by now. Yeah. But until next time. Bye. Bye. And yes. sweet dreams if you get any sweet, sweet dreams. <laughs> if you get any sweet. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye.